Now for the track guide. Turn 1 is all about carrying the most amount of speed possible and you can do that by opening up by using this concrete on the left side so while approaching it you want to place your left tires on the concrete to use all tracks so at the moment you turn in you're almost touching the grass on the left side you want to apex close to this curb even touching it a bit and the main point is to use as much speed here so in my case, I do a little braking and a small lift, but depending on your setup, you might do a flat out corner if you're having more wings and more downforce. But uh, while judging your corner, you should judge the gap in between 100% throttle off and again 100% throttle. So the point is to minimize this distance. Now we can get pushed wide and it's perfectly fine because we have enough time to reposition and now for the next corner which is a blind corner and the next one after it it's again a blind corner so it's a very tricky stack section my reference point is this crack in the middle of the track you can see it here it's more close to the right than to the middle but this crack is what I'm using to align my car so I don't want my car to be past this crack in the concrete so I'm following it I try to place my antenna in between those two trees here while using a bit of sitting angle and by the time I'm passing the second tree I'm preparing to straighten up the car. So those trees are my references for the turn in. I look at the horizon line, I align with the second tree and then I'm starting to straighten out the car because I want to be so close to this curb I want to have my car on this curb while braking and of course you're gonna do some micro corrections because you you're not seeing it so at this point you're not seeing where you're going so you will have to do some micro correction along the way but once I straighten up the car I, I start to apply braking and you can use this white line on the ground as a braking reference right here but i found that you don't really have time for it or at least in my case so i think the best reference and what's the most consistent for me is oh, it's braking on feel braking when i have enough time to straighten up the car so whenever the steering angle is centered i start to applying the brakes and whenever i pass this curb while riding it i start to apply steering angle so these are my references in this complex of corners and it's pretty tricky to nail it every single lap but after you apply the steering angle you're just a passenger and to make sure that you're gonna make the corner you will have to trail break a lot so still trailing still trailing still trailing up until we you get to this apex here to this curb you want to ride over it with your right tires and then connect the throttle as soon as possible and the main thing here the main highlight is to have this kind of throttle application you see it's very confident it's like a vertical line almost um, because if your throttle looks more like a staircase you lose a lot of time so even though i might not have a very ideal line because i got pushed a bit wide i'm carrying a lot of speed to make up for that and i'm able to control the speed by riding over this curb to balance the car so I'm not dropping the throttle, I'm keeping the throttle pinned and this is something that you should look into your laps. You want in this section, after the brake, to have 100% throttle and never drop it. And for the next section, you don't need to over prepare it, you don't need to use the space on the left side to open up because your car will be perfectly fine to handle it. Just ride these curves, focus on using the least amount of steering angle in this part to avoid scrubbing speed. And for the next corner, I position the car on this curb, I brake in the middle of it and i just trail break it and i'm not downshifting so i'm still keeping fifth gear i'm apexing around this this uh, yellow line i'm not using too much this curb just a tiny bit of it but if you go over it it will um it will drastically change the balance of the car because you want to be on full throttle so you see here i'm not even on zero percent throttle i'm almost keeping 2% throttle while still braking because I'm really really eager to go back on throttle because this is a big straight again so the earlier you can be on throttle the most time you will gain and if you have a good entry in, in this corner and you do everything right then your exit will be just a consequence of that and your exit will be at the limit closer to the sand here and closer 
to the edge of the track to the grass. So this is what your exit should look like if you're really pushing to the limit. Now for the next complex of corners, the first one I use this, the white line here, I use the second white line just to break and trail, trail, trail and even before I get to this curb I start to apply throttle to make the car rotate even more here at this point because you can you can get half of rotation with the brake and half of it with the throttle since um, this is like a compression zone here you have a lot of grip because here it's the place that you have the most grip so you must go really really early on throttle you can rotate the car a lot more and for the next one this is actually the corner that it's the most important in this part because it leads to the biggest straight and to have a good approach for it and a good braking part my main reference is whenever i straighten up the car like right now i start to apply the brakings i don't have a brake marker it's just based on feel and car balance. Whenever the car is straightened up, then I know I can maximize the braking. I apply the brakes and I'll tail brake a lot. So still trailing in the lower percentages and then connecting the throttle with the trail brake while using a bit of this curb. If you use too much of this curb, your car will bottom out. But if you use, let's say half of the curb, everything will be fine. Now, the last part of, the, of, the, of this track, it's all about carrying the minimum speed in the corner. So for the braking zone, I'm using again the second white line on the ground. Even before it, I start to apply the, the brakes. And I do a mistake here. I release the brakes too quickly, which is making me uh, lose maybe two tenths, two and a half tenths here because of that, because I'm not able to rotate properly. I want to cut even more than that. So you can cut even more than that and you want to be earlier on throttle. It's important here, it's critical to be as early as you can on throttle because this will lead to a big, big straight considering turn one is almost flat. So be earlier on throttle here. On this curb, you want to be back on throttle. You want to hit 100% throttle. In my case, I hit just 85 or so, and then I have to drop to cut this curb again. And this is not perfect. This is not ideal. You want to use more throttle than I did here. But the track limits, I'm using them quite fine. So you want to use all this curb and the curb before is just that the timing and this gap shouldn't shouldn't appear. If I didn't have this gap, everything would have been perfect. Now, moving on to the last corner, you don't need to over prepare for it. You don't need to go to the left side to open up. This car is perfectly capable of taking it flat from this position. So you don't need to travel more distance than, than that. Taking a late apex around this curb to avoid pushing, getting pushed wide and using all the track on the exit. And in short, that's a track guide for Road Atlanta. I hope you'll have a great week and I'll see you in the next one.